Hey. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Good. <laughs> so tonight we're not doing airplane wing work, but uh, I had this idea around a pretty cool way to finish our baffles. Okay. Uh, a lot of people are painting them or powder coating them, but uh, I was looking, thinking about something kind of unique for our baffles. There is a finishing technique that machinists use that's called engine turning or jeweling is another name for it. And this is, uh, you might you know, reference some of this on like old hot rods or even in aviation, it's these circular swirl marks that uh, are on a metal finish. And one of the most famous aircraft that have engine that has engine turning on it is Charles Lindbergh's Spirit of St. Louis. The very front cowling of that, if you notice some of the famous photos of Charles in that airplane, it has uh, engine turning you can see in the background. So we've got a benchtop CNC machine mm -hmm. that's uh, really, really small. And I thought, I figured, hey, you know, engine turning, that could be a lot of manual work. Why not figure out a way to have the CNC machine do all the work for us? So um, there's not, for this particular CNC machine, there's not a tool path for, you know, drilling or anything like that. So I wrote a Python program that outputs G code that should work and do the uh the sequence for us with the correct offsets to do engine turning so uh, okay. now we're actually going to i think we're going to give it a shot here so this is the testing this is the troubleshooting <laughs> it is so so it might not work we haven't uh we haven't actually tried it's this part out of coding, it's right? all part of part of development so i'm going to run this program successfully created my g-code file so I'm gonna go into my motion controller here. This is carbide, carbide motion. I'm gonna load the file, engine turning here, and open that. And we're gonna click on run. And we're gonna cross our fingers here, and we're gonna see what happens. Oh. That's loud. That. Did it just smash the marker? It did smash the marker. Huh. Too much pressure? Too much pressure. So continue. Let's pause that because it uh, quit. <laughs> Jog. Z. Let's raise this. Oh, yeah, that's not good. Fast. Z plus. There we go. So I wonder why that smashed our marker down. I had our zeros all set up. Based on that marker's height? Oh, set zero. There's our problem. What's wrong? That's our problem. So I think what happened when I set the zero in this, it was in millimeters and then I switched to inches. So it, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's got this all, it got it all messed up here. So we can actually, um, let's adjust that. We'll do an adjustment on that. Okay. Let's go back here. Done. All situated now? Yep. Okay, so now let's go load here, over. Okay, take two. So it's gonna prompt a load a tool, which we're not gonna do right now. Okay. And then should proceed to. There we go. So normally, if the abrasive was in here, it would be pausing for one second at each location and then doing an overlap half of the width of the abrasive that is going to be spinning in the spindle. So then when it gets to the end, it'll go back and it'll slightly offset. We'll see that in a minute here. So it's going to offset. And then there we go. So it positions on halfway in between. So 
and this is successful? This is successful. This is exactly the pattern it should be making. All right. Yeah, so that's, that's going to be great. Excellent. 